All right, I figured I'd go ahead and jump right in and give you a little something to think about here. Here's a, that's a little preview of some rabbits I've got going on here, not a big deal. Uh, I did build all these hand, uh, these cages by hand. And as you can see, there's a couple different styles, the round styles there. Um, these rabbit cages are the heavy duty kind. You, know, you can't buy that kind in the store. They're the heavy duty uh, hardware cloth. I've ordered hundreds and hundreds of feet of the stuff. There's a there's a little bit, I guess. Uh, you might see it behind that bucket, maybe over there. There's an extra roll of it a little bit. It's the heavy duty stuff. But anyway, um, what is it? One by one squares, and then I put a bottom mesh floor in there of, um, I think it's uh, one by half. And then I wrap it up the sides a little bit here. And so this stuff here is a one by one, and then about three to four inches right here is half by half wrapped over top of it um, so the babies don't fall out. Uh, if, I, if I'm slow and I don't get a, a little box in there or something to, to catch them. Sometimes that happens. I've lost several litters just because uh, here, I got a little visitor here. <laughs> the locusts, they're all over the place. You can probably hear them down there. Um, so, uh, yeah, and here's some crates here. There's all kinds of different things you can do. I mean, it doesn't cost any money at all to get you some crates, nail them together. I gotta clean that up here in a little while, but all these are just crates. Crates nailed up together, a couple nails and a hammer. And then you put your crate, your cage rather, and you stick it up there. And there's the mama rabbit. And you can't see too well, but he's, she's underneath the covering. There's a little post there that was already pre-existing. And uh, there is a roof, a little tin roof. A little tin roof right on top of them. And uh, so there's a couple. There's the mama. There's the male. The male goes in the middle. There's a couple mamas next on both sides. And uh, so there's your round style cages. And I'll spin this over a little bit here. I'll just give you a preview of some other ones. There you go. There's a big old square cage. You probably can't see it real well, but you see a bunch of babies. Now they're about ready. They're mixed. I think they are probably uh, Californian and New Zealand mixes. And right now they're ready. They're probably, they're a little overdue. I've been busy. They're probably somewhere around, I don't know, 14 to 16 weeks. And they are ready. Um, so they'll all be going pretty soon. Now the idea is is you want to get that mama pregnant before those babies get out of there. I found that when I do that, a lot of times uh, the mama will be more receiving and it won't mess her up so mentally. You know, she's, I guess she's done nursing now, pretty much just eating solid feed and drinking a ton of water because it's so hot. But um, yeah, so there's a big old family there and so I'll get that mama there pregnant and she will, Lord willing, go ahead and give me another litter here in about a month or so. Now they say that when it gets hot, it's been well over 100, uh, lots and lots of days here towards the end of summer and August, but uh, they, I've heard a lot of people say that the rabbits get sterile in that kind of a environment. I haven't had that problem yet. Now, my stud males are doing just fine. Um, I haven't had them um, go sterile on me, so maybe that is true. Oh, here you go. Let me give you, here's another one. I'll do a little close up here. There's another little family there. There they are. There's a black one in there. There's a black gene that flows through those rabbits. I can't figure it out. But we are just putting these guys in the freezer. We're eating them, yes. <coughs> we like rabbit. We eat lots of it. And um, so anyway, there's a, a weird gene that runs through that bloodline. We keep getting a, a black rabbit. Every, every litter, we get a black one. At least one. Uh, maybe one or two. And uh, it's strange. Because the daddy is, uh, is full-blooded and the mommy's not. I guess that's where it comes from. But... Anyway, there's another family. That's a square cage. And you see the lumber around it. I'm going to go out there and see if I can... You probably won't pick my voice up that far, so I'll just sit here and talk. There's a... All I did was I took something that I found, an old crate, and I just adjusted it. I built a cage to fit in what I already had in that little crate. So if you're smart about building stuff, you will save a lot of money by thinking nominally. Now what that means is you just think about the size of the crates, the size of the free stuff that you can get, and you build things according to those measurements. That seems simple. A lot of people realize they already know what that means, but it's important to, uh, to think about that. And I'll give you another example of what I mean about building nominally. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spin this thing around, try to go kind of slow, and I'm going to show you something right here. 
we'll go ahead and move out a little bit more. Go ahead and show you some of these things here. Now this right here, let's see if I can adjust the lens a little bit for you. Oh, wrong way. There we go. This little house, I'll just kind of tilt it up a little bit so you can see, is all this is, is just a four by eight shack. It's got a covered floor in it. It's got a plywood floor, it's up on blocks. And this is for the babies. And you can see the chicken wire that's wrapped around there. There is a nesting box in there built, and I did use it for some layers for a little while, temporarily, when I ran into a problem. But here's your house, and it's built nominally. What that means is it's built on uh, pieces of lumber, so I didn't have to cut them. You know, four by eight sheets, not cut, just laid across the top. You know, there is one cut, it's a four by eight, and another little one I wanted an overhang. But you can build something like this and save a lot of time if you build nominally. So think about that. You, you, get, you get access to a bunch of wood that's um, you know, 10 foot long. Think about that. You want to uh, build everything 10 foot long and if you're going to use it for a chicken house, you want to space it far enough where it's 18 wide or 24 wide or 20 wide, 14 wide, whatever, so that you can get your chicken wire on there without having to space it and splice it. You just nail it up in one strip on your pieces of uh, wood. You see a couple braces there. I just, you know, when I first built that thing, I, I nailed in and screwed in a couple braces for be a little bit extra sturdy. We live in a hurricane zone. Lots and lots of hurricanes come through where I'm at. All, all up and down the whole uh, coast. So I built everything a little bit overdone because I don't want it falling down the first time we get a good hurricane. Now this whole thing here cost me less than 200 bucks. And that's materials. I bought, had to buy all the materials for this thing. And after I spent that kind of money, I said, you know what? I'm not going to spend this kind of money again, so I've got a lot of free material. So let me turn around here. Watch out for snakes. <laughs> I killed a big, couple big ones uh, this year and last year. But here you go. There's a 4 by 8 sheet on top, protect from driving winds and rain. The bottom is simply just chicken wire. And the back side, you can see, is, uh, is open to allow a good draft. And yeah, the top's closed up pretty much. But the, it's plenty good enough, especially for your little ones, because you're going to go and um, they're going to need some heat anyway to keep them nice and warm uh, during chilly mornings. But there it is. The bottom is open. And what I do is when I know there's a big storm coming or when I have uh, little biddies in the bottom, I need to protect them from snakes, is what I will do is I'll wrap that in plastic, clear plastic, so I can poke in and see. And um, that way it gets them socialized. You, you, you would go ahead and if you use a dark plastic, they will get spooky because they'll be used to being dark and closed up. And then when you come in there, they'll freak out. So in order to train your birds properly over the years, you're going to want to use a light colored plastic uh, to, if you're going to do any covering so they get used to the shadows, get used to the movements, they get used to being socialized. I know it sounds funny, but it, it, will, it will help when you get some flighty breeds like maybe some, uh, some leghorns. Or, uh, or rather, uh, yeah, the leghorns get kind of flighty when they're little. Mine, never had any problem with them because I tried to use those principles. All right, but there you go. There's the, the basics of the bottom of that chicken house. And um, I framed them a little bit wider, the, the, uh, the studs there, uh, just because I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I get it up on blocks. Now notice this. You can see right there, I get them up on blocks so I can create a little bit of airspace there on the bottom. And uh, what I do is I take a ton of mothballs. You don't have to buy a snake off. Buy a ton of mothballs. And what I do is I just uh, take handfuls of them every so often, and I just scatter them all over the floor, and I wing, I wing them all underneath of the, the structures when I if there's a crawl space. Like my shed. There's a shed behind stuff. There's another little male backup. I got rabbit. But there's the shed that we had built. And see the crawl space? I throw lots of mothballs underneath there. That will drive the snakes out and keep your rattlesnake. I never even seen a rattlesnake here until I started bringing in my livestock. There's another pen we'll talk about later. And uh, once I started bringing in my livestock stock here, start snakes start popping up. Big rattlesnakes. I've got small children, so they uh, they met their maker immediately. We don't play any games with that stuff. We just shoot them on the spot. Got to skin them. It was pretty cool. That's a whole nother story. But anyway. Uh, this video is about done. Cut it off for about 10 minutes, but there's another chicken house. And we're going to talk about that one and the mistakes I made. And we're going to talk about the, the cool things that happened with it. Okay, thanks. Bye.